In this video, I'm going to show you some fun things you can do with book pages. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a capture with, my, with a book page. One of those image things that you have to click on different parts of the image to prove that you're not a robot on the internet. Fairly standard thing. What I want to do is I want to create one of those to make sure that the users are paying attention when they're carrying out a CBT or presentation, and they're not just blindly clicking through to go to the next page. So what I've got, I've actually created this already because it took me about an hour to set up in the first place, which is too long for a video. So I've created it already, and then I'll go into it and show you what I've done. So here, I've just to demonstrate to you what we're going to produce is I've got a simple book here that's got three book pages in it. Um, you notice I can use the navigation buttons to go forwards and backwards. I can use the table of contents to select a particular slide, all the standard features. So I'm going to go on to slide two. This is my capture, and this is what I need users to do before they go on to the next slide. So you can see here that my next button and the previous one, they've been disabled. I can't click on them, and I can't click on the table of contents drop down to select a particular slide either. It's basically disabled all navigation to get away from this page. All I can do is close down the browser window, unless I pay attention and do what it asks me to do in here. So what I've got here is I've got a simple image, standard format, I'm sure you've seen them before. Select all the squares that contain at least a part of a car. So in here, say I select a bunch of them. As I select a particular area, you notice I get a nice red box around it. If I don't select it correctly and hit submit, all it gives me is a retry button. I've still got my navigation locked. So all I can do is retry, which will basically wipe it and let me try again. And then if I select all of them, making sure I get the ones that have only got a bit of a car in them as well, and I click Submit, as soon as I do that, I've now got a Continue button. And I can continue and go on to the next slide. OK? So far, so good. So let's see how we build that. So this is my book, and this is my book page with my capture on it. Now I'm going to go through the objects we've got on this. First thing I've got in here is I've got a single image, one image with all of these parts on it. Now, you could make things a little bit easier by having 16 separate images. If you've already got the image, crop, um, cut it up yourself and pasted them in there, you could do that. But I've left it as one image just in case I decide I want to change it later or use a different one in another presentation. Because this is not really a true capture because it's the same image every time. But for my purposes, I don't care. I just need the users to do something on the screen to show that they're paying attention. So what I've got for each area on this that they can click, each one of these boxes, I've basically created two things. I've created an active area, which is the thing they can click on to do something. And then I've created a highlight, which is basically the red box that it shows around it when they've selected it. There's some other things that are done in here, but I just want to show you the basics at the moment. So the tiles, I've called each one of these a tile. Um, this is my active area. Um, so I've created tile one, and in my actions for that, you can see that as soon as I click on it, it's going to display highlight one, which is the red border around it. Don't worry about the other things yet. We'll get onto them in a minute. But the, what I would strongly suggest you do, one of the great features of SAP Enable Now, is create one of the active areas and then one highlight, select both of those and then just copy, control C, paste, control V, them together. Because what that will do is enable now will always number them automatically sequentially. So I copied tile one, but I already had tile one through to tile 16. So what it does for me is it creates tile 17. And it also creates highlight 17 because I already had 16. Highlight. So if you just did the first one and called it tile one and highlight one, and then copied and pasted, you'll end up with tile two, highlight two, paste it again, tile three, highlight three. So it numbers it automatically for you, which makes things nice and easy. However, the other thing it does, which is really clever, is you know, I showed you that tile one um, shows highlight one. Now I've got tile 17 here, and what's clever is SAP Enable now wants to keep the same type of relationship between these objects. So you can see tile 17 is automatically set to do highlight 17 and not highlight one, which was on the original one that we copied. The way enable now works is if you've got object A that triggers object B and you copy A and B 
and paste them to create C and D, it will automatically create object C so that it actions object D. It knows to do that. So that's all very clever and it will do those things for you. So let me just get rid of those. I've already got them all set up. So let's look at what else we have in here. I've got a submit button. When they click that, it's going to validate what they've done and it's going to show them either the retry button or the continue button, depending on whether they got it right or wrong. Now, another clever thing about SAP Enable Now is I've created both of the retry and continue buttons in exactly the same place over the top of the submit button because we only need to see one button at a time. But continue and retry, I've put those in a group called result. And the reason I've done that is because what I can do is when they submit, I can basically show that result group. Now, the group has two things in it. It has a retry button and a continue button. But by default, as well as the result group not being shown, because it's going to be shown when I click my submit, also the continue button is not shown. The continue button is actually on top of the retry button, which means that if it's not shown, you only see the retry button. So if I show this group, which is what will happen if I click submit, what will happen by default is that they'll see only retry. Unless I do something to trigger the display of the continue button, which is on the top, so that's what they'll see then. So this is what's really nice about Enable Now is because I can trigger actions on individual objects within a group as well as on the group as a whole. And we'll use that aspect in a couple of different places in here. Very, very useful. So let's look at what we've got here. So we've got the submit, um, which will validate what they've done. So how does it know whether they've, they've done the right thing, and whether the continue button should be displayed or not? So what I have here is I know that there's five in this particular image. There's five tiles they need to click on. So what I've done is I've created a counter. And on a count of five, i.e. when they've clicked on five correct tiles, it's going to show me that continue button. OK, nice and easy. Now, the tricky part is that these tiles I only want when it's clicked on tiles. What's that? Eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 14, and 15. So let's start with those. So tile 10, my action on that for my active area, as soon as they click that active area, what it's going to do is it's going to display that highlight. That's true of any of these tiles in here. Tile 10 will display highlight 10. But the next thing it will do is the correct answer count, which is my counter object here, it's going to increase it by one. Okay, so those five correct tiles, it's going to count up by one. But for all of the incorrect tiles, it's not going to count up. Now, there's a slight thing I don't really like about Enable Now is that you can count up on a counter, but you cannot count down. So I cannot reduce the count if they cl click on an incorrect tile. So to cater for that, I have to do another couple of things. Firstly, if they click on an incorrect tile, the first thing I do is disable my correct answer count because I don't care what else they click on. Um, because I can't count down and basically remove something they've already clicked on, as soon as they click on an incorrect tile, I'm just going to disable that correct answer count. This will stop them clicking on five correct tiles, then, sorry, clicking on a wrong one and then clicking the five correct ones and still being able to pass. Um, basically, as soon as they click on an incorrect one, it's going to disable it. So it doesn't matter what they click on after that. They're wrong automatically. The other thing I do is I hide the continue button. Now, you recall that once I hit five correct tiles, it's going to show that continue button because of I've got a count of five in here. However, if they click the five correct ones, it will trigger displaying the continue button, which they won't see until they click the submit button, which will show that group. But what they could do is they could click the five correct ones and then an incorrect one. As soon as they click the five correct ones, it's going to show the continue button. If they then click an incorrect one, I basically need to hide that continue button because even though they got the five correct ones, they've also got an incorrect one. So for all of these incorrect tiles, I basically hide the continue button just in case we'd previously shown it by them clicking on all the correct ones. And that's the basics of it. Most of what you need to do is just responding to when they click on one of these active areas of which I've got 16 tile 1 to tile 16 objects, 
and triggering what happens when they click on them. So let's look at the last few things in here. Remember that we disable the navigation, okay? So the, what I need to do there is on the page itself, as soon as the page is loaded, I need to disable book navigation. That's on the page object itself. So when this page object is loaded for the page object itself, it will disable book navigation, okay? And then what I need to do is when they um, click on the continue button, what that's going to do is it's going to enable that book navigation and then jump to the next page, which is what we want to do. I could, if I wanted to, just remove this one and just re-enable the book page navigation and then they can use, use the usual next button or the table of contents, but they're not going to want to do anything else on this page anyway. So I may as well just go page next and then push them onto the next page anyway. Okay. The last thing that we need to look at is the retry. So if they get the answer wrong, I basically need to clean up and let them try again. So here we're going to do something clever with groups again. Now, all of my highlights, every time they click on a tile here, it's going to show that highlight, whether they were wrong or right. Um, if they were wrong, we basically need to remove all of the highlights. I could have in here 16 separate steps or say, you know, hide highlight one, hide highlight two, etc., etc., all the way through. But because I have grouped all of my highlights into a group called highlight group, I can say, I want you to go to the highlight group and all the individual objects inside it, not the group itself, but the objects within within it, I just want to hide all of those objects, okay? Then the other thing I want to do is I need to reset my correct answer count object. I need to enable it again, because remember we would have disabled it if they selected the wrong thing. I need to hide the continue button within the group, and I need to hide that result group as well. The last thing that I've got in here is the tile group. Again, I've grouped all of my tiles together and I have um, basically, what I've done there is I've put them all in a tile group and I re-show that because I hide it if they, as soon as they click submit, I hide it because otherwise they could click submit and then try reselecting things even before they click retry or continue, which wouldn't make any sense. So in that, let me show you that on my, um, let me see on the submit button, the tile group, I basically hide that, which say stops them selecting anything else until they click retry or continue. Continue pushing to the next page. Retry will basically reshow that tile group and initialize, initialize everything else again. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I know it kind of looks complicated, but it's not really. Just make sure that your tile, your tiles, you've got the right actions on them. And then everything else is just around that count and cleaning up and making sure they can continue. So give it a go. See if you can do that. If you really get stuck, message me and maybe I'll send you the DKP file and you can see how I did it. But it's really not that difficult. OK, just something fun you can do with a book page in case you haven't thought of doing something this interactive or, you know, different from just words on a page that the user reads. OK, hope you enjoyed that. Probably more next time. Thanks for watching.